So the season two patch notes have gone live and I know we've covered this multiple times on the channel what actually is changing but now we actually had some additional changes come with this update as well as the actual numbers of how things are getting changed as well like an additional Mangler nerf and the potential of the curb slide being nerfed as well. So if you want to know more stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So we'll start off with one of the big changes I know a lot of people have some strong feelings about, and that's the Mangler, and it looks like it got an additional nerf beyond the 10% melee reduction across the board, which is coming across, which is kind of like a roundabout way that they're going to nerf the Mangler, so it's a two-shot melee instead of a one-shot melee, but it looks like it also had its reducing of its starting ammo reserve from 24 to 16 shots, and reduced its max capacity from 56 down to 40 as well. So that's another nerf going to the Mangler. We now have specific information about the Ravager buff, which they just said that we're gonna buff it, but they didn't say exactly how. But they mentioned here, they're looking to actually improve it to a two shot kill burst. So if you guys don't know, it does shoot three round bursts every time you shoot. So if you land all six shots within the bursts, well then you get the kill right there. And they've also increased the core splash damage from 10 to 25. So we definitely should see a much more powerful Ravager. So you actually be willing to pick it up in the matches. We have some specific information about the drop wall now, which they just said they were just gonna improve it, but they didn't really say how until right about now, where they say the changes now says the warm up time has been decreased from 1.25 seconds to now 0.5 seconds, so that should pop up a lot faster. Increase the duration from 9 to 12 seconds as well, and increase the shield dur durability dur versus kinetic weapons such as frag grenades, hydra, and spanker, increased by. 40%. So those explosive damages should be way less effective against the shielding, which I think this is actually a really good trade because I don't want it to get too much in the way of like battle rifle gunfights, which it does help disrupt that a little bit, give it a little bit of an advantage to the people who use it, but you gotta learn how to use it properly. But I think overall, this is a great buff to the drop wall. The buff that's coming to the overshield is now getting a extra half bar of shielding because right now the overshield, it does help, but it doesn't really help change the flow of the gameplay. It doesn't really feel impactful enough. So now now, the overshield increased from three times shielding to 3.5 shielding amount, as well as the decay time has been unchanged. So it's basically the same thing, but just an extra 0.5 of shielding. I also love the details on the patch notes when it comes to the vehicle changes because they actually provide like actual stats before. Normally they'll just say, it's gonna have less chance of flipping, but now we actually know exactly how much less time because as they increase the masses of a lot of the Warhog and the Razorback, from 3,130 pounds to 3,300 pounds. So it should be a little bit more steady on the ground a little bit and actually go into actual stats of like the Newtons and actual physics of what they changed as well, which I love the detail that they provide here. The Banshee also got a buff here as well. And that the mobility and the weapons have received multiple buffs. Seeing right here that the Banshee can now move slower and faster than before, including when turning. Weapon cooldowns are faster and deal more damage. And they actually provide the information right here where it talks about the actual speed changes that they made right there. Then it decreased the weapon cooldown from 3.75 seconds to 3.25 seconds. They increase the Banshee Bomb explosion max damage from 160 to 190. Increase the bom Banshee Bomb impact damage from 90 to 110. And also increase the Plasma Dual Cannon damage from 24 to 29. So a good buff right there for the Banshee. So definitely worth jumping back in and using. Now a big mechanic that really helps you move around the map is sliding, especially going down ramps. And they actually mentioned this specifically saying that the velocity gained from landing into a slide on a ramp that has proportional reduction based on fall height. So the higher that you fall, the faster you'll slide down. But my assumption then, if you're just doing like a simple little jump to kind of do a slide, you'll have less of that speed boost, which I guess is all right. I mean, I really like sliding, but it definitely hurts your controller quite a bit. This might reduce the importance of sliding a little bit, but definitely still keeping it in the game, which I enjoy. We also have some specific details about the new mode coming in, Last Spartan Standing, which is some really cool information going in for this. So it'll be a 12 player free for all modes with on big team battle maps. The first one will be just like a special event tied to this. It'd be just on Breaker and you'd be playing that over and over and over again. And it's based off a of personal score, the score that you have on how you level up your loadouts right here. So you get personal score from killing enemies, 
enemies, earning assists, and collecting eliminated player AIs. Also, when an enemy AI is available for collection, you get a bonus XP as well. So once you get your personal score level, you will see an icon pop up saying, now you can level up your loadout. And we actually have the details of what the loadouts actually are. So you have the same thing every single time. So you start with a disruptor and a sidekick, then you go with a mangler disruptor, assault rifle mangler, then you add in the commando, then you get the bulldog shotgun, and then you get the battle rifle. So every time you get a new option when it comes to your loadout, it replaces the previous weapon that you had. The way the zone mechanic is gonna work in here is saying that once the map has gone over five minutes of play time, then the circle will start closing in or when all players are out of respawns. Or staying in the danger zone will damage players, pretty standard right there. And also a good thing to know that the players who have used up all five of their respawns within the match are able to actually leave the session without any penalties or anything like that. So if you just don't want to sit there and spectate, you can just leave, which is really nice. We also have the return of King of the Hill, which has some changes which we covered previously on the videos. I won't go too crazy into that, but we just know exactly where King of the Hill is going to be going into ranked, quick play, bot boot camp, and also there will be a dedicated King of the Hill playlist. We also have a date when it comes to the first Fracture event, guys, which will be on May 24th, which will also bring the mode Land Grab, which is kind of similar to Strongholds, but a little bit of a mix up. Of course, we've covered it previously on the channel. I definitely suggest you check out those videos. We have rotating play that's coming in now, so we know exactly what's coming in. Saying the first rotational playlist of the season will be Rumble Pit, which will be replacing Free For All Slayer, which is the same thing as Free For All, but Rumble Pit is an FFA playlist with more modes, variants to create more Free For All variety. So things like King of the Hill, which always plays out really fun within free for all so i'm definitely looking forward to that and we also have the future playlist coming in as ninja slayer we have unlimited energy sword and grapple shot ammo vampire ball which is basically a ball game but then the one hit melees with the ball you also get 50 percent vampire shielding so you get the steel shields when you get melees and also you have the rocket repulsors which is pretty straightforward you have unlimited rockets and repulsors attrition is now part of the quick play playlist as well and we also have covered the changes where like once you get revived you actually will be able to start moving around and interacting you don't have the standard like you had to previously we also have the first bit of information about the mode elimination which is similar to attrition but a little different saying that it's a variant of attrition in which shared pool respawns are disabled and it will be available later in season two as a rotating playlist option we also have some exact information about the motion tracker changes so if you guys don't know that they are adding in the extended tracker feature where basically you'll see kind of like where people are shooting and sprinting and things like that beyond your normal 24 meters so in 44 game modes your motion tracker is 18 meters but then it will actually show players on like the outer edge of the blips it won't show you exactly where they are but general direction up to 30 meters away where in big team battle the motion tracker's max distance is 24 but it will also function up to 40 meters when it comes to that extended blips and it seems like a lot of people didn't catch this but now i'm just reiterating this from the last video that we do have endless weapon drill so you can just jump in to the training and just shoot away which i think is the best way to go about training your weapon skills in Halo Infinite. They've also improved the bot behavior within Season 2 as well, so the bots should be acting a little bit less bot-like and hopefully a little more human-like. And that's some of the new information for Season 2, guys. we got some more content coming out with this brand new season we'll be covering, going into great details about all of it, all of it. And so, guys, if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe. If you're new to the channel and missing any content from me, check out this video playlist right here if you miss anything from me. So thank you very much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.